Hey, what is going on everybody? This is Mr. KB. It is April 7, 2016, and today I come with a request video. As you guys may remember, two, three weeks ago, I did this video here for the PNY CS1311 240GB SSD. And at the end of the video, I said I don't really do the numbers, but then I got a request from a Mr. Jed Kuhn. Hey, dude. Can you make a more detailed video on this running some games or AOS? Would be amazing. Thanks, mate. And since I aim to please, I said, you know what, I'm going to do that. But instead of just sitting here and transferring files and launching games and trying to sit here with a timer and get every little nuance, I decided the one thing that I'm going to do that other review sites don't do or other benchmarking sites don't do is I'm going to run this on a dirty system. Most review sites will perform... SSD test, GPU test, whatever it is, they'll perform on a clean system. That means a clean system OS with nothing on there. And while those are good to see what a product can potentially do, where that leaves you is it doesn't give you any real world value or information as far as what can this product do for me? Because nobody that I know buys a new gpu new ssd new whatever and says you know what i'm gonna install new os so all the tests that you see here all the numbers that you see are being run on a dirty system a system that already has an os installed that has multiple games installed that has a bunch of video files on it and everything else so let's get on with it so this is my home system this is a system that i use for everything uh, the motherboard is a biostar ta990 fxe the CPU is an AMD 8320E stock, not overclocked, stocked uh, clock speeds. The GPU is a Sapphire R9 390 8GB Nitro. I have 16 gigs of Kingston HyperX DDR 1600MHz RAM, and my PSU is an Antic 630W 80 plus bronze certified power supply. And since I really want to display what a SSD upgrade can do for the normal man, I did test some some regular mechanical hard drives. The two that I have in my system right now that I am currently using is a Seagate Barracuda 500 gigabyte 72 RPM SATA 1 hard drive, and also have a Western Digital Black 1 terabyte 72 RPM SATA 2 hard drive. And since the PNY CS1311 SSD was in addition to my regular system, I already had a PNY XLR8 120GB SATA 3 SSD on here, which I want to test as well to kind of compare the two. The XLR8 is rated at a max sequential reads of up to 500 megabytes per second, max sequential writes of 475 megabytes per second, 4 kilobyte random read write of 60,000 ops, and a mean time before failure of 1 million hours. Now, these are the actual specs for the PNY CS1311, which is the subject of this request video. It is a SATA 3 240-gig SSD rated max sequential reads of up to 550 megabytes, maximum sequential writes of up to 520 megabytes. So on both categories, you're already seeing a 10% increase, or at least a theoretically 10% increase, a 4 kilobyte random read of 90 ops and 87,000 ops respectively with the mean time before failure of 2 million hours now on the on the 4k random reads and writes you can see that's an almost 50 percent increase respectively for each subject while it's a hundred percent increase on the mean time before failure so right away the numbers are looking good but do they translate let's find out since i didn't want to sit here with the stopwatch i ended up finding crystal disk 5 i set this to run five tests of varying file sizes ranging from 500 megabytes 1 gigabyte and 16 gigs those numbers just felt right i felt five tests was a good amount of tests to actually run and i thought that the file sizes range from videos that you would typically download or watch to slightly bigger maybe indie games to maybe higher def video and i felt the 16 gig covered that size of most games nowadays that you see most games now take about 10 to 12 gigs average and i felt 16 kind of encompassed a nice chunk of AAA titles. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, all storage items that you see, all SSDs and hard drives are in my personal machine right now and they're being used and that's what I ran the test with. So the first test I ran was a 500 megabyte file and these are the actual numbers here. As you can see, going from top left to bottom right, those are the ways I organize from oldest to newest. You can see that the mechanical hard drives, which are the two top ones, are really, really slow. We're looking at 47, 46 read write times, for the Barracuda, about 100% increase or maybe a little less than that for the Western Digital. And it's kind of what you'd expect going from SATA 1 to SATA 2. But if you look at my first SSD, the PNY XLR8, 
like the increases are almost two to three hundred times what you'd expect to see from a mechanical hard drive. And if you look at the PNY CS1311, it is about maybe 20%. No, that's about 30% on the actual read times and over 100%, almost 200% on the actual write times. The one point, the one place where the PNY CS1311 seems to suffer, even though it has a higher number, is on the 4K, the 4K random read writes. For whatever reason, you're either not seeing the increase that you think you would see, or you're actually seeing numbers being decreased, especially when it comes to the write speeds. And the second system around was the one gigabyte file. And once again, you see kind of a consistency between the hard drives. Those numbers didn't actually flex much during the actual uh, testing process that I did. The one increase that you do see is in the Western Digital Black. I'm not sure why it is that once I switched up to one gigabyte, that the speeds increased not by much it was probably about 20 percent but for a hard drive that's actually pretty good but when it came down to the ssds the p both pnis the xr the xlr8 and the pnys cs 1311 excuse me you see that they stay fairly consistent with read write speeds being the same but once again even at the one gigabyte file you see that the 4k numbers are still suffering and i'm not sure why that actually was again it could just be the dirty system messing with it that is not as optimal a uh, condition for the CS1311 to actually run at the top op speeds that you're seeing. But still, overall, in just the general sequential read and writes, you're seeing that increase for your money. You're seeing that 20, 30 percent. And on the write speeds, you're actually seeing two to three hundred percent faster writes, which is very important if you want to copy stuff over. It's going to move slightly faster on the CS1311. But it's still very interesting to see that on some of the numbers, it's just not adding up, mainly the 4K numbers. And here was the final test that I performed, which was the 16 gigabyte files. And I did this just to get a massive file in there. And as you can see, all the numbers for the hard drives and even the, C uh, the PNY XLR8 stay consistent. They don't vary much, but this was the one file size that I actually ran three times on the PNY CS 1311. And it surprised me because now all of a sudden you're seeing a big dip on the actual uh, sequential writes going into with the 60 gigabyte file into the CS 1311 where it was averaging 300 megs on the right now all of a sudden it's not that big of an increase when you compare it to the xlr8 again i'm not sure what this is and i'm happy that i actually ran these benchmarks to actually see this it's something where the change here will be not really noticeable to a human but just the fact these were things that i wouldn't be able to catch something that i'm not sure why it's happening but should be taken into account that you may see a little bit of a slowdown if you're copying over big 4k video files or big massive 30 or 40 gigabyte games people do have that maybe you buy this as a backup like i did and seeing that this performance kind of nerf came at this big file i'm happy that i ran benchmarks again you're still seeing an increase but i don't know why this happened and it's interesting but all in all still faster than the xlr8 and still way faster than mechanical hard drives and the last, the last test I performed was actually performed only on the XLR8 as SSD life test was not able to really verify the life of the CS1311. But I still want to run this test to kind of see where PNY itself on its manufacturing and quality of product kind of stood the test of time. Uh, once again, this test was run only on the XLR8, which is a SSD that I own prior to owning the CS1311, which is the subject of this video. But as you can see from this image here, according to SSD Life, I still have a good 10 years left on the health of my SSD. It's still rated at 100% after about a years of use. And I've been using it pretty heavily, writing videos to it, rendering videos on it, transferring files over, transferring files out, deleting games to make space, deleting videos to make space. So I have used this quite heavily and it's still rated at 100%. Now, the XLR8 was rated at a mean time before failure of 1 million hours. The PNY1311, which is the new SSD, is rated at a mean time before failure of 2 million hours. So if we're just going by the numbers and looking at the quality that I'm getting from the XLR8, if the new PNY CS1311 can keep up with the numbers and the trends, 
we're looking at a product that will last me just as long as my XLR8, if not twice as long, going by the numbers strictly alone. The, would it last 20 years? We don't know. But the quality is there. We can see it on the XLR8. And if the quality is there for the XLR8, and if that same quality and thought was put into the CES 1311, I think we'll be seeing at least 10 to 20 years on that product alone. So here are my conclusions and recommendations and just overall outlook plus Overwatch because I can actually do that. What I'm going to suggest is that if you're debating on whether to upgrade to an SSD from a mechanical hard drive, I think the numbers speak for themselves. You absolutely have to do it. The performance is there. Now, both PNY SSDs that I have are not the creme to the creme. They're not the Intel SSDs. They're not the Samsung SSDs that everybody seems to hype up as the best of the best. And that's fine with me. I think that the benefit you see from just upgrading to an SSD from a mechanical hard drive far outweigh those that you would see if you were to upgrade from a PNY XLR8 or a CS13 to an Intel SSD or a Samsung SSD, you just are not going to see them. I mean, using both that I have, and you can see that the numbers are vastly superior for the CS1311 with some exceptions to the XLR8, I myself don't notice that big of a difference. And from a human level, from a human experience level, you're not going to notice, say, eight seconds versus six seconds. And also you have to take to account is that the benchmarks don't really explain everything. If you're into a lot of online games, yes, maybe you can load your game that much faster, but the bottleneck is still there that you're going to be waiting for the slowest person. If you're playing a MOBA, it doesn't matter how fast you load into a game because other people have to load into the game to begin with. So you can't start a game. I guess the one benefit that you would see would be if you play a game like Tomb Raider, Fallout 4, you know, like single player titles that load in a bunch of information, maybe a uh, a Dark Souls or a Demon Souls. And those games, you might see the increased benefit. But once again, are you really willing to pay a premium for, say, 10 seconds at faster loading? The lifespan, I believe, is there. The quality is there between PNY and Intel and Samsung. As you, as you saw in the, the life test, I'm, I still have 10 years. If you still have a 120 gigabyte SSD in 10 years, then you're upgrading, in my opinion, a little bit too slow. I believe that most people will upgrade to a bigger SSD drive as the price comes down than they will to actually outlive the XLR8. And the XLR8, for the most part, in this machine will actually wind up being an archive. I'll wind up throwing a bunch of videos, home movies, and pictures on there way, way before 10 years are up, meaning that the life of that product actually winds up lasting longer because it is a solid state. Uh, drive so yeah you know i hope this was helpful i hope that you guys found the numbers somewhat interesting i sure did especially in the 16 gigabyte test um thank you again jed kun for actually requesting and kind of pushing me out of my comfort zone and letting me experience a little bit something different i hope this was helpful to you and anybody else who watches this i hope you guys enjoy this overwatch footage it's a little old but it's still good uh but until next time this is mr kb thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye